Good morning, everyone. Hi. Nice to see you. <laughs> Good. Uh, let's start with a prayer, shall we? Our Heavenly Father, thank you for today, for this meeting place and our time together. We ask that you give us grateful hearts for all your blessings to us. And that we may sing in our hearts towards you to give you glory. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know if you've uh, seen any of the series on television a while back about people going on pilgrimage. There was one with Kate Botley. She gets in everywhere, doesn't she? Uh, I've enjoyed some of those series. And I very much like the idea of the Christian life being a pilgrimage. And my verse for this new year is from uh, Psalm 84. And uh, it says, verse five, blessed are those whose strength is in you, that's the Lord, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs and the autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. So that's the idea of pilgrimage, of carrying on through this earthly life until we reach God. Uh, the Valley of Baca, I believe, can also be called the Valley of Spring, of Tears. That's right, so that's what I'm going to refer to, the Valley of Tears. Pilgrimage is a part of uh, Christian history. It's gone on for, for decades. I think of the, um, the Canterbury Tales. Uh, actually, that's uh, an aside. I've been watching each day morning prayer from the Dean of Canterbury. I do recommend it if you've got time. It's, it's long, it's about half an hour. And he's been doing it all through lockdown, apparently. I started at Christmas because I, I looked up the um, Archbishop's uh, Christmas address and then it referred me to the Dean. And he sits in his garden with his cat uh, and it's got lovely shots of the, of the garden and the cat doing funny things. And he touches on so much um, history, literature, music, plays music, and a, a lovely way of talking that really draws you in. And one day, um, he was talking about the, uh, Jesus turning the water into the wine, part of the epiphany thing. And uh, as he started, I thought, oh dear, Sunday school talk, not interested in that, can't believe it could have happened. Honestly, I immediately prayed for faith. Oh Lord, forgive me, give me faith to believe you do miraculous things. And by the time he'd finished talking, I was almost in the heavenlies with feel that, that sense of, of faith and God's presence and his nearness. So I highly recommend the Dean of Canterbury. Anyway, in these pilgrimages that we see um, on television, you see how they struggle with the parts of the journey. If it's through the mountains and they get very hot, sweaty, blisters on their feet. But they also have a great time and discover things about their spiritual lives and they have um, good fun together. So it's both a spiritual experience and friendship with, with other pilgrims. And I like the idea of our life as a pilgrimage, especially if there are difficulties in life because it gives a sense of moving on and overcoming. Um, and I think with the purpose of looking for signs of God along the way. Pilgrimage has a sense of adventure to it, the future unknown, the past behind us. What matters is that we are going on, sometimes against all odds. I love the old hymn that, that we used to sing at school. One more step along the world, I go, remember? It says, from the old we travel to the new, keep me traveling along with you. Ours is a spiritual pilgrimage and it means traveling with Jesus and also traveling towards him we're going to have that final meeting at the end when we see him in glory but along the way we have glimpses of glory and I think it's worth considering where do we get these glimpses of glory in our lives 
what helps us to see them and what prevents us seeing them. I, I did a, a retreat day on this very thing and I, I discovered that the things that helped me to um, catch glimpses of God's glory were in the creation, in creativity myself, uh, in music, and in talking with people. All those things have helped me to get glimpses of God's glory. Now, the nature of pilgrimage is that we face challenges on the way. Problems, illness, loss, sadness, a whole heap of things. But having a heart set on pilgrimage, I think, means we're less likely to give up when the going gets tough. And the psalm says such people are blessed by God. Blessed are those whose heart is set on pilgrimage. Somehow, by God's grace, we receive the blessing to help us keep going. And then the next bit of the verse says, um, who going through the veil of tears, use it for a well. This is an amazing thought. I find it something holy and wonderful that going through the veil of tears, that sadness can be turned round and we find blessing in it. It's no small thing, I don't say it glibly, but with reverence, that even in our time of tears, we can know God's blessing. This gives us hope for the future. It gives, I think, purpose, a way to go in our life, in our prayer life, in our relationship with God. Thinking of life as a pilgrimage helps me feel excited about life. It becomes an adventure. I like the fact that God says we're blessed not for being pilgrims, but for setting our hearts on pilgrimage. Carries the idea of desire, heartfelt desire to follow him, a real determination that nothing will turn us aside from walking with Jesus. A real desire to be committed to moving on through life by his grace. Enjoying the journey, as the pilgrims did when they saw things that uh, interested them, and experiencing glimpses of God's glory on the way. Traveling together and enjoying the company of our fellow pilgrims at Yerni. And if we don't feel up to this journey, if we can't summon the desire to set our hearts on pilgrimage, I love the verse in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. He will do it. He will enable us and give us the will, even before we do it, the will to act. So thanks be to God for all that he does, for his blessing uh, and for his glory. Let's pray. Our Father, so many things across the world concern us today and we bring to you those people who are suffering, people in Tonga, Lord have mercy on those who have suffered loss, who are facing difficulties in their everyday life. And we pray that aid will be able to get through to them and they would receive help. We think of the situation with Russia and the Ukraine and again we cry, Lord have mercy. We ask, don't let there be war and the suffering of many people. Please Lord, in your love and your power intervene and somehow in your amazing way, prevent the loss of life and suffering there. We think of Afghanistan and the horrific stories we hear there. And we cry, Lord have mercy on them. Lord, please enable all the agencies that are working there to have good success in helping people, in feeding programs, in providing money and homes 
Lord, show us how we can help in any of these situations. Touch our hearts and our pockets, we pray, so that we will share from all the good things we have for those who have so little. And I have a little, little prayer book here produced by Open Doors, uh, who work with the persecuted church. It gives a reading from Ecclesiastes. I saw the tears of the oppressed and they have no comforter. Power was on the side of their oppressors and they have no comforter. There's a little reflection on a situation in India. It says in India, persecution has been part of a guy called Kalia. He's on his life story since the time he came to Christ. He has been physically beaten, cast out by his family and community. His house was burned down, and most tragically of all, two of his children died in mysterious circumstances. He says that people told me to leave Christ, yet somehow the resolve to follow him was stronger than ever. I knew only one thing, even though I had no comfort, even though I had questions, I must cling to him, for he knew where else could I go. I kept quiet and I continued living. So the prayer is, Lord Jesus, thank you for this brother. Comfort him and his family and all like him today. Finally, we pray for ourselves. We ask that we may grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus. We pray that we may grow as a fellowship together, serving you in the community. We pray for all our brothers and sisters here who are unwell and facing challenges in their lives. Comfort, Lord, all those who suffer, those in pain. Bring your healing touch into their lives, we pray. And strengthen us, that your spirit in us may lead and guide us in all your ways. Amen. And so let's say the Lord's Prayer together. I need to have it on the screen or I can't remember the modern version. It's up there. Oh, here it is. Okay. Together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>